everyone and welcome to the Serial Geek TV YouTube channel. My name is James Etock and today I present to you 50 things about Orco. So without any further ado, let us begin. Robbie London, the man who pretty much shaped the Filmation series into what we know and love, created Orco with the little guy originally named Gorpo. The name Gorpo was actually used in the episode Creatures from the Tar Swamp for comedic purposes by the character Lady Edwina as she attempted to recall the name of the small blue wizard. In the first UK Masters of the Universe annual, Orko is depicted as per what we would see in the cartoon, but with a blue costume and skin akin to that of Prince Adam and Taylor. The late, great Lou Scheimer was the voice of Orko, and by downpitching Orko's voice, we can hear Lou's familiar tones. Orko! What happened at the palace? Skeletor's taken over! He, he made, made your parents, parents disappear! Man-at-arms and the sorceress too! He shined this light on them and they just disappeared! What are we going to do? How about that? Thanks to Lee Clevenger, Dusan Mitrovic and myself, the world finally got to see what Orko looked like under his hat and scarf in the animated adventures guide to He-Man and She-Ra published by Dark Horse. No, I'm not showing it here. Track down the book. In the first episode produced, Diamond Ray of Disappearance, the animators were clearly still trying to get a hold of how to animate Orko. As a result, his appearance changes, though not dramatically, throughout the episode. As you should all know, Orko is from the land of Troller, and on his homeworld he is known as Orko the Great, a famous sorcerer. Arriving on Eternia quite by accident, Orko's magic fails to work as intended. This is because Troller, theoretically, functions in reverse. In the Season 2 episode The Ice Age Cometh, storyboard artist Hal Sutherland directs Orko to break the fourth wall during the story, something he does on two occasions. One of the most striking Masters of the Universe bootleg figures ever created hails from Mexico and sees Orko looking a little worse for wear. And many years ago I turned that bootleg into an animation model, who also looked a little worse for wear. Orko saved the lives of both Prince Adam and Cringer upon arriving on Eternia. Thus it's fair to say that he performed a mighty feat that day, saving the lives of the future He-Man and Battle Cat. Orko was the star of the commercial bumpers. These memorable sequences were sadly not digitally transferred during the 90s by Hallmark. As a result, they are only available in VHS form. At least two unused Orko commercial bumpers exist. Thankfully, I own one of them, which Dusan Mitrovic and I restored for a 2018 showing of The Return of Faker. And here it is. In two episodes, The Rarest Gift of All and The Secret of Greyskull, Orko runs away from home, only to wind up at Castle Greyskull, with the sorceress showing him, via the window of spirits, why he is important to his friends and loved ones. Orko was even illustrated by THE Bruce Tim, as he was not only an artist on the Masters of the Universe mini-comics, but also a layout artist and eventual character designer at Filmation. In the episode Return of Evil, it is revealed that Orko is the keeper of a powerful artefact known as the Dimension Sphere, which he hid within the walls of Castle Grayskull upon first arriving on Eternia. In the Masters of the Universe comic published by Marvel's Star Imprint, we see Orko fantasizing about wielding the Sword of Power, leading to a rather unique illustration by Ron Wilson. As I said, unique. Orko loses his patience at the end of the episode Golden Discs of Knowledge, leading to a quite epic rant. We risk our necks going in the Snake Mountain, we fight our skeleton and all of his henchmen in a giant snake, we get the disc, and what I want to know is this. What, Orko? How come I never get any credit? In some publicity cells, the colorists clearly had some fun with Orko. Occasionally, Orko forgets that he can float, with him hanging onto the side of a building for dear life in the episode Valley of Power, and Teela has to remind the little Trollin that he can levitate. 
Although in the cartoon Orko is depicted to be rather small, his action figure, accommodating for the device inside him which enables him to spin around, is quite large by comparison. In the UK Masters of the Universe comic, Orko was often depicted as wearing gloves. Bizarre. Although Orko is a powerful sorcerer in his own right, he is unable to control the magic flame that he obtains from the Pit of Shadows, sending him hurtling through the air like an out of control firecracker. Orko's inability to control the magic flame causes Granamir to laugh, and honestly, this ending always makes me smile. Boy, was that a mistake! <laughs> oh, I haven't laughed this hard in a thousand years. <laughs> We see Orko transformed into a rather adorable cricket in the episode The Shaping Staff. Orko appears in 114 of the 130 episodes of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. A rather impressive feat, some would say, not that he has feet. Orko's magic inexplicably works in Eternia's past, as revealed in the episode The Time Corridor, and there is no explanation whatsoever. Orko has a rather tempestuous relationship with the attack track, well, at least in the episodes penned by J. Michael Straczynski. No one can be wrong all the time, not even you. The odds are that you have to be right sometime. Why not this time? Great! Even when I'm right, I'm wrong. And the only reason I'm right is because I'm wrong, and if I'm wrong, it's because he's right about me being wrong. Ooh. In the beautifully illustrated Bruce Timm book, The Power of the Evil Horde, Orko is captured by Hordak and taken to the Fright Zone. Or as narrator Robert Ridgely puts it, The Fright Zone. I can't do it justice. The Fright Zone. In the episode Like Father, Like Daughter, Orko appears to be transfixed by Teela's beauty, resulting in him being almost subservient to the captain of the Royal Guard. In the She-Ra episode Shades of Orko, we learn that without his shadow, Orko loses his magical abilities, which takes quite the toll on the poor little guy. For comical purposes, the O on Orko's chest would occasionally pop off. After an accident with the Road Ripper, Orko found Man-at-Arms holding the O, which the Master of Weapons kindly returned. When Orko gains possession of the Hate Stones in issue 9 of the Masters of the Universe comic published by Marvel Star Imprint, he gains both great power and an even greater desire for revenge. Orko flees to take cover when Prince Adam unsheathes the Power Sword in the episode The Gambler, proving that it's not wise to stand near the power of Greyskull. Orko was scheduled to appear, unchanged from his original design, in the proposed 1996 animated series Hero, Son of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe from Lou Scheimer Productions. I've never thought about this before, but I do wonder if Lou Scheimer was going to voice Orko once again. With his friends and allies captured by the Ice Lord, Orko pretends to be He-Man in order to secure their safety and grant freedom for Prince Adam. You know, the guy that is He-Man. In the UK Masters of the Universe comic, in one particular story, Orko actually does become He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe, and sure enough has all of his abilities. His actions throughout the story confuse Shadow Weaver, who is doing her best to capture He-Man. In the episode Orko's Favourite Uncle, Orko's Uncle Montauk arrives on Eternia. A sorcerer, Tauron, turns Montauk evil, with Orko having to win his uncle back. In the episode The Return of Orko's Uncle, Orko's Uncle Montauk is back on Eternia. A sorcerer, Azrog, turns Orko evil, with Montauk having to win his nephew back. 
When Orko is covered in snow, he looks eerily similar to the Ghostbusters logo. Orko is understandably very impressed with King Randor's Orko cosplay. Gee, I kinda like that. <laughs> Paul Dini once drew this illustration of Orko for longtime fan Dave Turgeon. Dini, unsurprisingly, had very few nice things to say about the little trollin. Oh, Paul. Orko can be seen without his hat for one single frame in the episode Betrayal of Stratos. On this occasion, unlike what the storyboard artist had in mind, he simply looks like his action figure. Orko is missing from the five-part introduction to She-Ra, the Sword of She-Ra, also known as the Secret of the Sword. The reason for this is that writer Larry Dottilio decided that there were already too many characters in the story and felt that a She-Ra episode devoted to Orko showing up on Etheria would be better. He was right, and Orko would agree. Most memorably, Orko fell in love during the He-Man series with Driel, a native of his homeworld of Troller. Their relationship was taken to the next level in the She-Ra episode, The Greatest Magic, with their love being one of the key elements that saved the day. Orko enjoys pulling the same trick twice on Trapjaw. Some writers weren't sure how to write Orko. Whilst most sensibly wrote him as intelligent and inquisitive, others wrote him as a child, which was very frustrating given that he was already known as Orko the Great by this point. Orko's magic is zapped from him by Skeletor and Evil Lynn in the episode The Magic Falls. The Magic Falls are, according to legend, where the very first Trollen gained their magical abilities. Although a hostage in the episode Orko's Return, Orko causes so much grief for Beastman and Trapjaw that they eventually resort to letting him go so that they can retreat back to Snake Mountain. You mean you're not going to take me back to Snake Mountain with you? No! <laughs> Orko is just as close with He-Man as he is with Prince Adam, as we see in the episode The Problem with Power, in which He-Man thinks he has killed a man. Orko's profound sense of loyalty is shown when he wants to take away He-Man's pain and guilt. He presents all of the excuses, but He-Man, at this point, is a broken man. Orko, when I first became He-Man, I swore to uphold that which was right and to protect the innocent. Accident or not, today I broke that promise. And finally, Orko is by far one of the most instantly recognizable characters in the series. A Masters of the Universe canon without him is missing the element of heart that Orko so effortlessly provides. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe.